Hi, my name is Carla Sondheim and welcome to Kids Art Week. Um, today we're going to do a project inspired by a master artist named Paul Clay. And uh, he was an artist who uh, was born in Switzerland in 1879 and was working about a hundred years ago in Germany. Here is an example of some of his, um, his work. And um, you can see he's kind of all over the place in terms of style. He tried a lot of different media and a lot of different things. Um, what we're going to do is kind of take inspiration from his grid paintings. And these are paintings that he did kind of to work with color all through his life. And some of them are quite neat like this, and some of them are a little messier. And um, today we're going to use your name as inspiration to create a painting a grid painting that is kind of like this. I, I didn't have um, a sample of this in, in my book, but this is kind of where we're headed. So what you're going to need is some paper. Um, I have here a pad of mixed media. Um, it's a regular kind of paper, so any kind of thick paper that will take watercolor. You'll also need some crayons, and I have just a few colors here. You'll need a set of watercolors and a brush. And I like these round brushes that come to a nice point, but any brush will probably work. You might need a ruler if you want to, you don't have to. And then you'll need some water and a paper towel or a rag. So I'm going to get started. So I have here my paper. And the first thing we're going to do is mark out a grid. Now, I could use my ruler to do this if I wanted to, uh, but I think I'm just going to do it um, freehand. And you want the boxes to be pretty square. So I'm going to, let's see here, make a three row grid. So there's row one, row two, and row three. And now I'm going to write my name in here. Um, I've created for you a little um, sheet that kind of shows, I mean, you don't have to follow this if you don't want to, but this is um, a kind of a way that I think Paul Clay might have broken down his letters within the boxes. So I'm going to set that right here and just write my name right in the middle row. C, A, R. And I'm making sure I go right to the edges of the box. And um, I'm going right over the lines. And the reason for that, the reason you want to go to the edge of the lines is you want spaces to color in. And that's what we're going to do next um, with watercolor. And as you can see, this L has a little triangle here to color in. And here, this R has this sort of weird shape. And then these, all these little shapes. And we're going to color these in with different colors. Now, I like to um, use watercolors so that there's kind of two layers on top of each other. And we're going to do that today, too, which means the first, um, first layer doesn't have to be that dark. So you can use lots of water and mix up a lot of paint or pigment. And I'm just going to test it on the side of my paper here. And that's pretty good, a pretty good color. So I'm just going to start. I think I'll start by coloring in my um, C, and, and then I'm just going to move around the painting, adding my red color to some different areas. If you get too much paint on, for example, if it just is too wet, you can always wipe your brush off on your rag and then just pick it up a little bit and spread it around. But 
But can you see how the paint is pink and not red? It's red, but it's, it's watered down to be sort of pink. If you go outside the lines a little bit, don't worry. Now I'm going to pick a second color. Maybe I'll do blue. Lots of water. I'm just going to test it. Yes, it's nice and light. And the great thing about having crayon as our outline is the watercolor, it kind of acts as a barrier from the different squares. It's waxy, so it acts as a barrier. So I made a mistake. I'm just going to wipe my brush off, lift up that color a little bit, and then just continue and not worry about it. Now, if you have a smaller brush, it might not hold as much paint, so you might need to kind of go back in and dip into your paint. Just wanted to let you know that. Okay, choose a different color, maybe green. And I'm just filling in these little areas with my green. Um, again, I'm not too worried about it going over the lines a little bit. It won't show in the end, and if it does show, then it makes it a little bit more interesting. So I want to color in all my spaces. I'm going to go to an orange as my last color. Oops. So it's, it's really good to work and study the artists um, who've come before us because they've worked out a lot of the things that already and they can help us kind of have a, a shortcut. Um, Paul Clay did these grid paintings to sort of learn about color and how colors look next to each other. And, um, and he did it his whole life. And so we can take his idea and do it ourselves too and, and learn a little quicker possibly. I'm almost done coloring everything. And then I'm going to have to let this dry. And I need to let it dry completely before I go to the next, um, the next step. So I'm going to let this dry. If you're working along, you let it dry too. And when we come back, we'll go to the next step. Okay, so my painting is dry and it has to be completely dry before you move to the next step, meaning I can put my hand on here and it won't be cold and it won't be, get wet on my hand. Uh, so the next step is to take yellow and go over the whole painting with just one color. And what that does is it helps make all these colors work together. Plus it'll shift the color a little bit um, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, so I'm going to make myself a little pool of uh, yellow 
And it doesn't have to be too dark. Remember, these are sort of lighter layers because two light layers make a dark layer. I'm just going to check my color here, and that's pretty good. Maybe I'll add a little bit more yellow. And then all I have to do now is go over the whole thing with yellow. And what happens is, so cool, the, the blue turns green and the pinks kind of turn orange. And the orange areas get even brighter. And if you, uh, you I'm just kind of gliding the paintbrush over here. If you scrub it, the color will start to move. So I'm just gliding the paintbrush over the top. And I've got my yellow all over, and now that needs to dry too. Okay, so it's dry again, and now as your last step, um, I had you use two different colors, one for the name and one for the outline, and now we're going to also layer on top of the crayon with one color. We did different colors for the paint boxes, and then we layered with one color, and now we're going to do the same with a darker crayon or, or a different color. Um, I have a blue here that I'm going to see how that looks. Um, and so I'm just going to go over now my lines that I had originally done. And again, it doesn't have to be too perfect. Um, it's okay if some of the other lines show through. And then now I'm going to do the same thing with my name. And the idea is that we want it to get, make it so that the name is somewhat hidden. And so you really have to kind of look hard to see it. So this is my finished one. I have a couple of other examples to show you. Um, this one was made with a ruler. And it's the name of my three grandchildren, Liam, Ethan, and Ellie. So if you have brothers or sisters you want to add to this, or your mom and dad's name, or pet names, that's great. And then the last one is just a little Kim that I made earlier today. So um, I hope you enjoy this lesson. Remember that you're layering watercolors so they don't have to be too dark. Uh, don't worry about mistakes. You can just let it dry and then keep going and have fun. And I can't wait to see what you post online.